Ah yes, the best team for Heart Gold and Soul Silver, but only Johto Pokemon. Admittedly, I felt like doing this because I just really like Heart Gold and Soul Silver. They're two of my favorite games in the franchise. The visual design, the fun mini games like Voltorb Flip and Pokeathlon, the newly updated themes for the gym leaders and for Team Rocket. What's not to love? Besides the ridiculously amount of grinding you need to do from Gym 8 to the Elite 4, and the lack of Pokemon trainers in Victory Road outside of Silver. Which, can I just say, they did my boy Silver dirty. Look at the way they got him on Sneasel and not Weavile. Yeah, I get that Crobat is due to a lack of friendship, and Kadabra and Haunter are due to no one to trade with because he doesn't trust anybody, and that Magneton has nowhere to evolve into Magnezone. But I also don't care. I respect that he can beat the eight gym leaders and challenge the Pokemon League with that underpowered ass team, but I cannot survive in bro shoes. He's built different. But then look at how they got his team at the Indigo Plateau. They really made Bro weaker than the Elite Four level-wise, and still robbed him of Weavile and Magnezone. Game Freak hates this man. This is ridiculous. And he's champion level in my heart. Oh yeah, uh, the best team, only Johto Mons. But before we get started, this video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Being a content creator has been relatively stressful for me over the past few years. Whether it comes to looking at analytics or even in some cases comparing myself to others, the therapy service provided by BetterHelp has helped me cut back on these habits. If you're going through stressful times and need affordable therapy, then BetterHelp could be your solution. BetterHelp makes therapy less intimidating for a lot of people, as you can talk to a therapist right from your own home via phone call, messaging, or even video chat. The best part is, you can schedule an appointment when it's convenient for you. To get started, you'll fill out a questionnaire that will help you to find a therapist to fit your needs and preferences. In most cases, you'll be matched with a therapist within 48 hours. If you feel the therapist isn't a great fit, simply go into your settings and switch therapists with no additional costs. By clicking the link in the description below, you can join over the 4 million people, including myself, to start living a happier life. BetterHelp has helped me in so many ways, and I can't stress enough how important therapy can be, especially if you just need someone to talk to, or even just staying on track with your goals. BetterHelp has helped me conquer a lot of my own negative self-beliefs, and it could do the same for you. If you click the link in the description below, you can get 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. So thank you BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. So we're going to go ahead and start us off with our starter. We're going to be going over these Pokemon in the order of which we pick them up throughout the game, and where they're obtained just for the sake of clarity. So when you go to Professor Elm's lab, the best choice is obvious. Cyndaquil is going to be the best Pokemon for the job. Yeah, no Ember until level 10 sucks, but other than that, the early evolution into Kulava letting you trounce Falconer, and how easily it clears the early game's trainers who seem to like using Mons weak to fire. Bro is immaculate. And of course the matchup into Bugsy is completely into your favor. And even if it can't beat Whitney's Miltank 1v1, you got other Pokemon for that. And access to the TM for Fire Blast just by getting into Goldenrod is broken. With the exception of fighting the rocks and waters that resist its fire blast, the Typhlosion line is good for the majority of the game. It only really stops helping you when you fight Claire and Lance. But by that time, you have five other team members. So Typhlosion did its job of clearing most of the game and carrying you on its back, spamming Fire Stab. Getting Solar Beam is really nice too, because up until Victory Road, the most Silver can threaten you with is Water Gun which makes the Feraligator not too scary. We're not gonna talk about Kanto this time because I firmly believe Kanto is easy as heck once you catch up to the level cap and it continues the trend of on the off chance Typhlosion can't carry, you have five other team members. And when you go to Dark Cave, if you just keep running into Pokemon, you'll quickly find Zubat. Zubat admittedly doesn't become a Pokemon until level 13 when it gets bite. But once it does, you'll quickly find that it becomes a rather effective attacker. It's capable of serving as a backup in case your Cyndaquil slash Kalava ever goes down, and due to its solid speed and attack, it can pick off whatever beats your starter by sheer virtue of bite. 
Getting Wing Attack at level 17 is also very useful, because not only do you finally have Stab, and said Stab is conveniently very good in the Bugsy, but you also help with one of Typhlosion's rare bad matchups later down the line, Chuck's Polyrath. Chuck's Polyrath is one of the few things that can actually threaten your Typhlosion with powerful, super effective damage, and Crobat is easily able to shut it down. Not to mention, if you're willing to grind it out, you can basically get Crobat by level 23 by running around a lot as a level 22 Golbat, leveling Bro up, and then having a Crobat by the time you get to Morty, where you can spam Bite against him with no remorse. This Pokemon also will be saving us a lot of time by getting us where we need to go with the HM Fly. And oh, I almost forgot. Sludge Bomb can be picked up from the first gate going up to the Lake of Rage after the Mahogany Hideout is defeated. Of course though, we have two rock weaknesses on this team, don't we? We may want to find a resistance for that. Which is why before we go to fight Gym 1, we're going to make our way to Route 32 and pick up what we like to call an investment. Wooper is a silly little guy that isn't going to be doing too much on our run for a decent bit, although it won't be doing absolutely nothing either. Mudshot at level 9 is going to let Wooper at the very least get some much needed experience by fighting off Team Rocket's poison types. And thanks to Water Stab, we can make it through Union Cave without too much trouble by spamming Water Gun versus Onyx and Geodude. So it's definitely going to have its moments to shine outside of being a bit of an HM slave with Surf and Waterfall later on. It won't do anything versus Bugsy, but you don't really need it to with Zubat and Kulava in your back pocket. Where it's going to wind up shining is going to be with Water Absorb, which lets you heal from water attacks, which will give you adequate switch-ins against your rival, as well as any of the water-based trainers we'll be fighting when we surf across the Grand Blue to get the Seenwood City. Not to mention, Earthquake level 33 is just going to wind up being really good. And when it's combined with Water Absorb, you have a way to nullify Claire's Hydro Pump, which I imagine being really, really good to have while hitting it back really hard with Earthquake. It also gets Stealth Rock as a TM, which is incredibly useful for chipping Lance's team on entry in case he's giving you problems. Another option you can use is the Blizzard TM that you can get from the Goldenrod Department Store. We're not leaving Route 32 just yet, as we have an adorable sheep with the ability Static that not picking up would most likely lead to the death of us all. We're gonna need that Pokemon as it means to super effectively hit water types and flying types during our run. And let me tell you, Heart Gold and Soul Silver has a decent bit of those. One of which this Pokemon is absolutely necessary for destroying in a certain champion battle. Otherwise, we're not going to have a real answer for it. Having a mid-stage by 15 that happens to also go well into Bugsy is a really nice plan C in case Kulava and Zubat botch the job. Level 30 Evolution 2 and Discharge at level 34 so you don't have to use Thunder? Combine this with Static and Thunder Wave, everything will be paralyzed in one way or another by the time you're done with it. Does Ampharos get anything useful other than electric moves and paralysis? Well, Signal Beam at level 42 is incredibly late in the Johto, and you can get Dragon Pulse as the badge 8 TM. Also, if you're brave enough, you can buy Focus Blast from the department store. What gems does it go well into other than Bugsy? It beats Chuck's Polyrath, Price's Seal and Dugong, Claire's Gyarados, and can paralyze Claire's Kindred to make it easier to beat. It does its job, and it does it pretty well. Now, once we get to the Elex Forest, we're going to teach one of our Pokemon Headbutt, thanks to the guy that is nice enough to teach us the move for free. And then we're going to do some backtracking, so we can get our hands on a Pokemon I like to call the Ultimate Carry. Because when you headbutt the correct trees and find Heracross, you can get on its back and it'll essentially take you throughout the region, blasting through the 1 billion normal types you fight throughout the game with the powerful Brick Break. Which it gets at level 19, mind you. And eventually close combat at level 37. Aerial Lace by level up is also neat for random other bugs and fighters, like Chuck. But what makes Heracross really special, and what begins its tirade of taking you through Johto on its back, is the part where it effortlessly beats Whitney the shreds and smithereens. Then, by grabbing the Shadow Claw TM from the right of Ecroteak near Mount Mortar, you can pick up Shadow Claw, which then lets you absolutely dominate Morty. Just, uh, be careful of Dream Eater. 
It serves as an excellent backup plan against Chuck and Jasmine, and utterly decimates Price. It's also neutral in the Kindra, which means it can be part of the team effort it's going to take to beat Claire. Heracross is just an incredibly reliable Pokemon all around, and will quite literally perform well versus just about anything. It's sadly useless versus Lance the Flying Master, but that's what you have other Pokemon for. Speaking of other Pokemon, it'll take us until we get past the seventh gym, but it's going to be worth the wait. I know I said Johto Mons only, but let's be honest with ourselves. We're not going to pick up Swineb to use Pile of Swine. No. We're going to go find the heart scale by any means necessary, aka going to the Pokeathlon on Wednesday and Sunday, and then getting one from there so we can have our Mammoth Swine before we go spam Ice Fang against a bunch of dragons. This Pokemon is absolutely vital for the late game, thanks to exactly its ability to claw through dragons and give you a positive matchup into what otherwise is going to be one hell of a bad matchup against Lance. Ice Shard at level 28, Earthquake at level 40, and remembering Ice Fang with the Heart Scale is really all you need. The fourth move at that point is just Flavor. And with the sheer might, it's going to be your one-man army in the operation to defeat Mono Flying one last time before entering the Kanto region. Because it only needs two moves though, there is no reason not to give it strength so you can go explore areas you missed out on otherwise. So, that's the best team for Johto with exclusively Johto mods. You can't argue Mamoswine is a Sinnohmon, but it evolves from a Johto mod. And who unironically wants to use Piloswine when Mamoswine is right there? Now, if you really want to use Piloswine that bad and try to spam Ice Shard through Lance's Dragonites, be my guest. But I'm sticking to my guns. With that said, what's your favorite pair of six to bring for Heart Gold and Soul Silver? Mine, uh, is, well, that's a good question. Umbreon? 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 Okay, I need to go now before I out myself as someone who only likes one Pokemon.